My name is Joseph Joy Adama. Uh, can you just tell us what brought you down here? I was arrested in Lagos State, first of all, for, for stealing from a man. Yes, right. For, for attempting to steal from a man, but we later found out that the man was dead. Can you just tell how it happened? Okay. I worked for him in his clubhouse last year for about three months until the clubhouse got shut down by the government. So on the first day that I submitted my CV to his um, hotel for the job, he copied my number off my CV and he called me and he told me that he wanted to have a um, like sexual, like he wanted a relationship with me, but because I was working for him then, I used to turn him down. And during the course of the four months I worked in the club, every time he came into the club too, he always made advances at me, but I, I did not turn him down like rudely because he was my boss. And then when the club got shut down, I stopped working. Then later I worked like down at the bar for like a month and a week until I now stopped working by myself. I resigned by myself. So even after I stopped working, it still used to contact me and text me and everything. But anytime I tried to ask him for anything, yeah, there was even a time I asked him to help me when I had rent issues. He just ghosted me and then later, after a while that he knew that everything was already calm and I didn't need the help anymore, he came back and started texting me again. So it happened that like two like two weeks, I stayed in my friend's hostel for like two weeks because we were having exams. So during that time, he still used to text me. So like he even called me one day like that and he said he wanted to see me. So I talked about the man with my friend and I told her that like, I've, like I don't want to have like any sexual relations with him at all, at all, at all. But at that time, I was also in need of some money for some personal stuff that I wanted to sort. So that was like the idea of like stealing cash from him, like maybe from his car, because mostly people used to like have cash inside their car in the middle place of their car. So the idea was that like if he agrees to do BDSM with us, like to like BDSM is like the kind of sex where you tie the person's hands and legs. So while his hands and legs are tied, we can like take cash or whatever valuable we can find and live with it. But it turned out that that day, even when we went to see him that day, when he asked us to come, we even talked to him about needing jobs. But he told us that they were, like, he did not have any job available at the time. But with time, that he would be able to find something for us. And he also liked my friend that day. He was even like he was telling my friend that he likes her and he wants to sleep with her and everything. Basically, that day he was like proposing that he was proposing that he wanted to like have sex with the both of us. So we now proposed the car sex to him. And he agreed, and the BDSM too, he agreed. He was even telling us already from the garden about how he was going to deal with us and everything when we get inside. Although we were not bothered because we knew we were not planning to have sex with him, and we just wanted to like take his cash and leave. So he now told us that he started ringing. So instead of us going to the car, he now told us to go across to a building that was across the garden where we were to meet him. So when we went inside, we were waiting at the reception, and then he just came and he started going inside, and we were following him. Then it turned out that it was a room, like we didn't know that the guest house that was there, maybe he works there or he owns it. So when we went inside the room with him, my friend went inside. She excused herself and went inside the toilet, and I don't die inside the toilet. So. While we were inside the toilet, I explained to my friend that um, his car sex that we wanted to do, this one that he has brought us into the room, what are we now going to do now about it? So she was like, I should be calm. We went back inside 
with the man. And because he already had eyes and attention for my friend before, he started touching her immediately we came out. And he carried her and placed her on the table. He moved his shirt. Like, he got naked and he got on the bed. Then I got on the bed with him. He allowed my friend to tie his hand and tie his leg. He was even the one that raised up his leg for her to tie him. So, after she tied his hand and his leg, based on the fact that we were in a room and not in a car, because normally we thought that if we want to have car sex with somebody, it cannot be in a public place that people can easily see or hear. But because it was in a room, so we were already thinking about what we were going to do, like in case like maybe he start shouting or something. So um apart from the two ropes that we used to tie his hand and it's like there was one other tiny clothes like all these clothes rope that they used to tie on gown that was tiny. So after my friend tied his leg and his hand and she placed the rope in his neck. So I had this um small clothes that I used to tie on my head, like small anchor that I used to tie on my head like a scarf. So like after, because my friend already tied his leg and his hand, so my own turn was to like try to put the handkerchief in his mouth so that that small loop I can use it to like close it so that in case if he wants to shout, he won't be able to shout. But because I panicked and I freaked out, I when I put the clothes in his mouth, he removed it and he told me that he did not want it. Then me too, I now took the clothes and I put it in my mouth and I told him that it's because we don't want him to moan too loud, that's why. Right. But he refused. So, during, um, after that time that I refused to put the clothes in his mouth, I just like left him because I also panicked. That was why I could not tie the clothes in his mouth. So during the course of me being on the bed and just caressing him and everything, my um, friend went to the bag. We already had um, this thing before. We already had um, Refno in our bag that we were supposed to like give to him so that he would sleep like after, so in case so that I will be able to leave. So my friend put it in her hand, and when she tried to pour it into his mouth, he turned his face away, and he didn't enter his mouth. He said he didn't need it to lighten up his mood. So I think at that time, she was now getting impatient, because it was raining before, and as the rain stopped, everywhere became quiet, and like we were running out of time. So that was when she took the phone, and she was placing it in front of his face. I was even surprised, because before, she even picked up the phone with everything that was going on. It was not suspicious. It did not, like, it was just, like, willingly doing everything. So I was also, like, surprised that how come he did not even, like, think about anything. Like, he allowed those ties and on his neck so easily, like that. So when my friend put the phone in his face, he told me wanted to video him. So he was not like, we should not video him, we should not video him. That was when he now pushed me off the bed because I was already sitting like on his leg before that was when he now pushed me off the bed so my friend got on him and she put the phone in his face and tried to like unlock the phone with his face like since he didn't have because the man the man is like he did not have like cash or anything with him that day in his pocket or anything and we didn't go to his car so there was nothing else that we could do except if we were able to like get money from his account. So when my friend put the phone in front of his face, that was when he now freaked out and he now started like shouting and everything. I don't know how he managed to lose the rope that was used to tie his hand and he started hitting my friend. So as he started hitting my friend and he started shouting, she took the pillow and placed it over his face to muffle his screams from shouting. So like doing everything, suddenly it just went calm. And like, as it went calm, I got down from bed and I asked my friend that like, I think this man is pretending because like he wants us to like let our guard down and he will try to stand up and try to hold us again. So I kept telling my friend that I think he's pretending to be asleep, that he's pretending to be asleep. So my friend went to the door and she turned the key of the door, pretending like as if we were leaving. And she said he opened one of his eyes. So when she said that, we now went to him and we're now begging him that, okay, please, can you wake up? We are not doing anything to you. Just wake up. We want to go. Because we felt he was pretending, but he didn't answer. So that was when Anna went outside to the reception. Because before we entered inside with him, he gave us a call to drink. Even though him, he didn't take any. We asked him why he did not take any. He said he does not need a call to get in the mood that we should just drink the alcohol because he was going to deal with us tonight. 
like sexual talk and everything. He even touched my friend's breast while we were in the garden there, outside in the open space there. At, at the end of the day, you discovered that it's dead? We did not discover it was dead until when the police apprehended us. How? Um, me, I already went home to um, Mowe. So it was while I was in Mowe that the police came to apprehend us. I even thought that it was because we left with the phone the man's phone, that that was why they came to apprehend us. And we gave them the phone and the SIM card, only to find out later that that time that we thought he was pretending, he was already dead. What are the other things that you went with? Um, we went with the rope, refno, and one small kitchen knife that was blown. Because when he started eating my friend, the kitchen knife that was in my hand, he tried to bend the knife, but the knife didn't cut his hand because the knife was blunt. The, we held the knife just to make him scared. Like, the knife was not even sharp at all. It's like all these bed, the knife they used to cut cake. So instead, instead of that, when he was eating my friend, the pointy, that pointy part of the knife, I was using it to, I was using it to like pierce him a little and begging him that he should stop eating my friend. That like if if he should stop eating now, they were not going to hurt him or anything. But he kept on eating now until when he suddenly went calm. All along, the 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 kitchen knife in question, even when he held it onto his hand, that he tried to break it and bend it for my hand, it didn't cut him. It didn't cut me too. It was totally blunt, and that was why we took it. Are you happy with what has happened? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was the first time ever that we even tried to steal from anybody. Can you give me a I'm bringing them the justice. Yes. Uh,